Solo travel can be daunting, especially if you're traveling to a foreign country, but Japan is a destination where solo travel is not only easy, but also incredibly unique. I'm Nathan Ninja Monkey, and I make videos about Japan as a tourist, for tourists, and most of my trips have been done solo. I'm a firm believer that nothing should stop you from traveling to this amazing country even if you're alone. I'll be giving you my first-hand experience of solo traveling all of Japan's main islands across multiple trips over nearly the last decade and exploring what makes solo travel so unique, making me the traveler that I am today. So why solo travel across Japan? Maybe you simply have no one to travel with or you're on a journey of self-discovery. Everyone is on their own unique journey. It actually took me a few years to feel brave enough to travel to Japan. It was a fear of the unknown, safety concerns, fear of loneliness, language barriers, cost concerns, lack of confidence, and probably the biggest was social stigma that originally stopped me from making the leap. I must admit that my first trip didn't initially come through solo travel. Instead, opting to join a tour group and then staying on for a few days on my own giving me a taster of solo travel and independence that would lead to countless future solo trips in the country. And this is what I've learned. It's easier than what you might think. Traveling solo in Japan is easy because the country's transportation system is very efficient. Trains and buses are punctual and intercity travel is easy to navigate with most signs and announcements in English in the bigger cities anyway. This means you can easily explore all corners of the country on your own without the need of a guide or a tour group. A connection to the internet and Google Maps will always save the day. People will help out. It's common for Japanese people to help tourists who are lost due to their strong cultural values of hospitality, politeness and respect. I once went to a pharmacy asking for eardrops, which resulted in one of the workers driving me to the nearest health clinic to see a doctor, waiting for me and driving me back to the pharmacy. People have gone out of the way to help me on many occasions. I even made a social experiment video about this, so you might want to check that one out. Overall, the language barrier, although making things a little bit more challenging, should not be something to worry about. Gestures, <laughs> Google Translate, and smiles will go a long way. It's super rewarding. Traveling across Japan is so rewarding due to its rich culture and history, from visiting ancient temples to experiencing a traditional tea ceremony. There are countless opportunities to immerse yourself in Japanese culture which usually means an amazing photo opportunity. And the best part, in my opinion anyway, is in a way doing it all on your own means that you can take the time to really soak up the experience. I have a really fond memory of sitting under a pagoda in Onomichi during a rainstorm with soggy feet thinking, oh well, there's nothing much I can do and just soaking it all in, excuse the pun. Slowing down, taking in the scents, the sounds and the atmosphere, whilst I took shelter under this amazing wooden structure. Being alone allowed me to focus on the moment. Make it personal. Traveling solo has led me to meet many local people, something that simply doesn't really happen as much when I'm traveling with others. Most of my Japanese friends come from my solo trips, sitting in izakayas, giving a postcard to someone as a gift, pro tip by the way, <laughs> usually leads to conversations, exchanges on Instagram or line and meeting up for drinks again in the future. And if you're anything like me and return often, that's how friendships grow. For me anyway, when I travel with friends, I usually meet other travelers. But when I travel alone, making connections with locals seems to be far easier. The country is set up for you. Japan is unique in that all, if not most, restaurants and bars are set up and used to serving solo customers. You don't need to worry about any social stigma regarding eating or drinking solo. The likelihood is that you won't be the only one doing so. And on the topic of food, I've learned during my solo trips that Japan is a culinary paradise and traveling solo means that you can eat what you want, when you want, whether you're trying street food in Osaka, indulging in kaiseki meal at a Michelin starred restaurant, you could experience the country's amazing food culture on your own terms, even if it means a sneaky family chicken from a convenience store. Staying in accommodation as a solo traveler means no compromising 
stay where you want in the type of accommodation that works for you. For example, staying in a traditional Japanese ryokan is an experience like no other. These inns offer a glimpse into traditional Japanese culture with tatami mat floors, futon beds and Japanese breakfasts. And because you're traveling solo, you can fully immerse yourself in the experience without worrying about disturbing other guests. It's safe, but don't let your guard down. I don't think there's any other country in the world that makes me feel as safe as Japan. People save their seats by leaving their personal belongings on a table or seat and attended whilst they go to the bathroom, etc. This is Japan. Walking at night, traveling on my own has never made me feel in danger. However, even though Japan is statistically one of the safest countries in the world, you should always be cautious. I usually keep to well-lit areas with plenty of foot traffic because there's always bad people out there. Don't fall into the spell of thinking that you can simply travel carefree. Go local. Solo travel makes for an excellent opportunity to explore further afield. Exploring some of the lesser known places and smaller towns has actually nearly become an addiction for me. The hospitality and the way that locals have welcomed me in these smaller lesser known towns have always been some of my trip's highlights. When you travel alone, you can make up your own itinerary. Make it full on or slow down to suit your needs change plans halfway or simply go with the flow. Cultural experiences can get personal when you travel solo. There are many cultural experiences that can simply be observed by traveling around Japan. However, don't be surprised if traveling solo and local will lead to being included in them. I was once traveling through a small fishing village in Shikoku during a very local fisherman's Matsuri festival and before I knew it, I was invited to carry the omikochi, which is a shrine, and even ended up leading the procession for part of it. I was fed and given plenty of alcohol and welcomed by the locals with the children drenching me in water along the way. An experience that I will never forget and would likely only happen in these smaller villages and if you're traveling solo. Oh, and by the way, I'm one of those crazy people who carry a huge suitcase with them, big enough to simply plonk everything inside and easy to open and access. I personally find carrying a rucksack simply doesn't work for me, but I guess it's up to personal preference after all. What would you carry? I'd love to know. Solo travel is not perfect. Although solo travel works well for me, it might not be for everyone. From my personal experience, solo travel can be a great way to be spontaneous, but I do think that it's best to be prepared. Solo travel requires careful planning and preparation, especially when it comes to safety, accommodation and transportation. If someone embarks on a solo trip without proper research, documentation or a well thought out itinerary or a backup plan, it may lead to unnecessary stress and discomfort. So I would say that planning is key, not just for a successful trip, but also for peace of mind. And this was probably the biggie, Loneliness can occur and many people are worried about feeling lonely and it's natural after all. There are many ways not to feel lonely. Joining a day tour or staying at a hostel are some great ways to meet like-minded travelers and there's nothing wrong with signing up for a tour with a local volunteer guide or even participating in a home stay to add a different element to your solo trip and allow you to meet local Japanese people. Planning these elements into parts of your trip will help out in this area. Or keeping a rather busy itinerary might also do the trick. Give you less time to think about being alone, but on the other hand, burn you out. So it's very important that you get the right balance. You can also use apps like Meetup to join group activities or coordinate meetups using the Ninja Monkey Discord server. Why not? It's not a shared experience. Solo travel does not lead to shared experiences. When I travel with a friend, it's nice to have a shared experience to talk about, photos and videos to share with each other, and plenty of stories to laugh about in the future. And yes, the struggle is real. It's difficult to take photos of yourself. You'll have to be brave and either ask someone to take a photo or get good at using the self timer or taking selfies. And in terms of accommodation, I mentioned the pros of accommodation earlier, but booking a standard hotel room can turn out to be more expensive if you're not sharing with someone. So booking ahead is probably of utmost importance if you want to keep costs down and not stay in shared accommodation or capsule hotels. Also, there have been times when finding a ryokan for only one person has been a challenge and rather expensive. This just requires more planning and research. Ultimately, you know yourself better than anyone, and I think it's better to go to Japan solo than not to go to Japan at all. If you're really worried, then perhaps consider making your trip 
not too long, what do you have to lose? Take the plunge and explore this amazing country on your own terms. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video about solo travel around Japan. If you have any tips to help fellow travelers, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you've watched this far, how about proving it by commenting with a thumbs up emoji. See you in the next one. Stay positive, but be a happy gaijin. Till next time, arigato gozaimasu. Gracias, thanks, and bye. Thank you.